Welkom bij Topnames live uit EMG Factors in Groningen. Waar we de hele dag Groningse bedrijven interviewen. Innovatieve bedrijven hier uit het noorden. Is het leuk om te doen, Stekel? Ja, ik vind het superleuk. Ja, ja, we hebben al uh, heel veel mensen langs gehad vandaag. En, uh, ja, er dus komen er ook nog veel. Plunder de archieven uh, later ja. deze week uh, als je uh, nu live kijkt. En uh, zoek verder als je on demand kijkt. Onze uh, volgende gast is Chintan Shah. Uh, you're from uh, TV Highlight. Twilight. Twilight, you say Correct. it, yeah. Uh, why didn't you use the, the W? Well, we wanted a dot .com. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and and uh, you Twilight did... is taken by a movie. So we just change W with a V and that becomes twilight.com. Okay, yeah. Yeah. now I That's understand. Easy. And what do you do? Well, actually we do something simple. What we have designed is a sensor, a plug and play sensor, that fits into existing and new street lights and makes them intelligent. Basically two things. During off-peak hours, let's say night hours, when there is no one around, the lights dim. Uh, and as soon as any occupants is detected, not only one light, but all the surrounding lights glow to the full mode. And if a person walks, the light walks. It's like Michael Jackson moonwalk live. Oh, so, and, and why did you start doing this? Well, actually, a couple of years ago, I was flying uh, uh, between London to Amsterdam. It was, it was about eight o'clock in the night, it was winter. And I saw this amazing thing from the plane, that on one hand I was reading this climate change uh, magazine, and on the other hand, all the lights in the city were burning all night at full brightness. I thought, how is it possible mm -hmm. that we want to reduce energy and CO2, and on the other hand, the lights are burning even when there is no one around, absolutely no one. And this triggered my interest. I started doing some research, and I found out that Europe alone pays over 10 billion euro each year only to power street lights. And this is amazing. This is something I want to change. Mm -hmm. And therefore we started Twilight. And you started it with uh, some friends or how did it work? Tell us about your, how, how the company started. Well, we started as because a hobby. Because an idea is one thing, but then uh, starting a company and executing it is another one. I fully agree. Yeah. So, well, I must say this started as a hobby. In 2010, I thought, you know what, let's try. I went to my university, TU Delft, where I got my master's. And together with some friends, we said, we go and try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All we wanted to do is show the principle that by doing this, can we save substantial energy? And actually, our pilot at Teu Delft worked. On the pilot, it was just one street, but we showed the principle, and it saved up to 80% energy. And that was significant. And with this pilot, uh, it got some media attention, and uh, we started getting a lot of interest from clients. One of them was Noonan, which is just next to Eindhoven, they have a residential area. They say, yeah, we don't like these lights all night. Can we do something with your system? And that actually, it was a hobby. And from that hobby, since we got our first client, we got subsidy from Provincie Groningen and my first investor. So we thought, okay, let's give it a try. From the Provincie Groningen? Yeah. Okay, interesting, because you were actually doing your pilot in Delft. So yes, yes. Uh, the Provincie Groningen is actively trying to get technology companies to the north. That's what they do. Yes, yeah. we tried to apply. And actually, the thing is, I was open to move to Groningen because my wife actually is a professor. She got a job in Groningen. So I was also very keen. Okay. And Provincie really helped. That was a switching point. That why Twilight today is in Groningen, not in Delft. Okay, are, uh, how successful are you by now? I mean, it's four years ago that you started uh, working on it, or three and a half, or something like that. Uh, how big is your company at the moment? Uh, actually, in 2010 and 11, it was just a hobby. Yeah. I had my job, and I was doing this one day a week. Try. In 2012, we really started. I was one person at that time, but now we are fortunate. We are about 25 people, and we have uh, not only clients in the Netherlands, but also quite abroad. Ireland, Germany, Canada, Australia. 
Yeah, but and I saw you were taken over by Pol. Uh, or is, are they participating? Uh, yeah. How does it work? Yeah, they are investor in Twilight. Okay, they're investor. And Pol, for who doesn't know it, they're the 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 Volkswagen uh, importer in the Correct. Netherlands, all Correct. the Volkswagen cars, isn't it? Yeah. Besides other things. Yeah. Like they have a large business in Caterpillar and yep. uh, Money Upon has personal interest in uh, uh, in Coo and. So, but it's his vision to be active in an area of smart city and energy efficiency. He, he sees the world needs such solutions. Yeah. So well, I was wondering, I, I was looking at how the system works and it's actually, of course, once you have the problem in your mind, the solution is very simple. Correct. You need a motion sensor in Correct. the street. You Correct. need to be able to control every light individually uh, and that's it. Correct. So why would uh, you be able to sell this idea internationally because anybody can copy it very easily or is Correct. there something special in your technology that gives you that uh, competitive advantage? Yeah. Well, there are a couple of things. So idea in principle is very easy and actually many good solutions are simple. Eh? Mm -hmm. You think of Google or a mobile phone or Facebook. They did not exist a couple of years ago but now without them we cannot imagine life. Same it's going to happen with something with energy domain, smart grid domain, and street lights. Now, idea is simple, but there are a few things which are a bit technically challenging. So one is a sensor, for example. Now, indoor sensor is very simple. You have a, a closed environment, you detect or you don't detect. But outdoor is a very different animal. Eh? You have to filter out rain, snow, wind, but also small animals, cats, dogs, but also all the environmental conditions. For example, a tree is moving nearby. At the same time, you should be able to filter out whether it's a pedestrian, bicycle, or a car. So here already you see that it's not... Uh, yeah, so uh, from this I conclude so. that you don't use uh, standard sensors you, you buy on the market, but you, that's what you have developed yourself. Yeah. Or that's is it the software behind it? What, what is your unique selling point? It's a combination. So it's a combination. We combine eight sensors in a single package yeah. and with a decision of milliseconds. And not only that, but this, this sensor has an integrated wireless communication. Whenever it detects, it filters out and it triggers the neighboring lights within milliseconds. Because imagine, we, we not only want to detect a person, but give him safe feeling, a circle of light around him. If a person walks, the light should walk. He should always feel safe. And it's not only one light, but maybe two or three lights in front, two or three lights in behind, or maybe 10 lights in front, 10 lights behind. That entire circle should walk. So this sensor should be able to filter out and trigger the neighboring lights within milliseconds. That's the key. So it's more complicated than, than I think. Yeah. It's a little bit challenging, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> we have okay. 18 engineers <laughs> scratching their head to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. So and that's the beauty. Yeah. Well, and you say this is a part of the so-called smart city. Of course, a smart city is about more than, uh, uh, than light. So what are the, the big steps we can still take uh, in these smart cities? Yeah. So what does it look like in a couple of years? Yeah. Now imagine that if all the street lights are connected wirelessly. Now you can throw different pieces like traffic lights, water management, sewage management, garbage bins, but also simple things like elderly care. For example, an elderly person who is walking, but for some reason he or she forgets where is he, then actually since everything is connected, you can guide the person to go in a certain direction or send services. Or for example, imagine ambulances. If by making the light blink, if we can save two minutes of that ambulance, a life can be saved. So the future we see that street lighting is a great application because we can save substantial energy. But the future is more. It's about connected devices. That, that will cost a lot of energy. Yeah. Well, that is the beauty, <laughs> yeah? Like, <laughs> imagine your mobile phone. Now, mobile phone is a much active device, but this, this wireless things, this is the world has changed last 10 years. Internet of things, if you hear, this is it. 
Yeah. It's about connecting devices to facilitate more. But still, um, we have also made some programs already about the smart city and the connected city, and there's a lot of interesting things going on. Um, but a lot of people are also uh, rather worried. They say, you know, uh, it's also kind of nice sometimes uh, to walk in a dark street. Correct. You know, Correct. and to hide behind the corners, not because you want to do something wrong, but just and to enjoy darkness. Right, right. Um, you know, and all those systems, they have their own intelligence and they decide in a way for the majority of people right. how the city should behave. Uh, how do you, do you think about this, this yeah. issue? The thing is, nothing is going to change immediately. And people always have a choice. Eh? Like to be on Facebook or not, it's a choice. To use Google no, or not, but, it's but a choice. With your street lights, I don't have the choice because somebody decides to use those lights and, you know, uh, uh, they will be uh, very uh, uh, full strength if I walk uh, or pass by them. I don't have the choice. But do you have the choice now? No, uh, I don't. But, um, you know, some people fear that, that the system will take over and they don't have any influence on it. And the system then always know, knows that it's you that's, that's there as well. So it's not only yeah. that uh, there's a person, exactly. but because everything's connected, so it's a sort of a, the big brother uh, element in it as well. Yeah, actually, the thing is sometimes, uh, you know, as humans, uh, we are always uh, thinking of change and sometimes we think too negatively and we make assumptions. So, for example, here we made two assumptions. Number one, that the system is watching anyone. Absolutely not. It's completely the, the sensor we use are non-intrusive. Nobody's detected. Uh, I mean, no individuals are named. But the second thing is it's not going to happen within a click of the time. We are talking about a long period of time. And actually, every city or village has a choice to make, to do it or not do it. But it's also a choice to keep the streets dark. <coughs> and it's the people who decide whether they want street light or smart street light in a community. What we see, there are a lot of advantages. But if certain communities think, ah, it's not for us, it's not for them. And also, and we are not gonna lighten up the forest or lighten up the areas which don't need to be lightened up. On the contrary, we are dimming down the areas which don't need to be light up. Let people feel comfortable, but without bringing disadvantage to the environment. Uh, you that's something, the beauty. Yeah. You say um, what we do is, uh, is two things. We reduce costs and we uh, save energy, uh, so to say. That seems to me like a really easy product to sell. We are very fortunate because um, the demand is very high. Because the thing is, the world has started to realize that the way we live right now is not sustainable. I mean, the energy we consume, the amount of waste we produce, the amount of plastics we consume, the amount of energy, the CO2 we emit, it's not sustainable. I and mean, without compromising human comfort, if we can achieve substantial energy saving and reduce the cost, why not? It's a win-win for yeah. the cities, for the people, and for the environment. Yeah. I think uh, maybe we can show you the, the video, Martinez, the, that is on your website. Uh, yeah, that please. That will gives, uh, give our audience a nice uh, overview of uh, what exactly you are doing. I'll start it. Every day, street lights are powered from sunset to sunrise at full strength throughout the night, even when there's no one around. This costs Europe over 27 million euros each day. This is a big waste of energy and money, and additionally, an unnecessary source of light pollution. The solution is both simple and effective, to violet intelligent street lighting. A plug-and-play wireless sensor to make street lights intelligent suitable for both conventional and LED streetlights. The lights dim to a predefined level during off-peak hours, when no one is around. And as soon as any presence is detected, all the surrounding lights glow to the full mode. In this way, a pedestrian, cyclist or a driver always moves in a safe circle of light. The right amount of light when and where it's necessary, that's the idea. The result, 
50% lower maintenance costs, an energy saving up to 80%, and therefore also considerably lower CO2 emissions. Moreover, the return on investment is between three to five years. To Violite Intelligent Street Lighting is therefore a unique solution which combines public safety with savings. Would you like to know more about this solution or become a partner? Visit us at tvilight.com. Tvilight Intelligent Street Lighting, a bright future for people, planet and pocket. Well, I think you have a substantial marketing budget. Huh? This is a very slick made uh, video. Yeah. We are very thankful. Yeah. We get, uh, I'm very proud of my team who really believes in this solution. And they work not because of they get salary, they work because they believe that this simple product has a huge impact and can really help the environment. And that is something you get as a result. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when, you, uh, when, you, when you sell it to, uh, to Noonan, for example, so what, is, what do you do? For, is it, uh, the, do you use, say, Philips uh, lighting and build your own software? So what, what is the core of your product? The core of the product is basically the sensor and the software behind. Now, a client can choose any light. It could be Philips, it could be Shredder, GE, Fagerhelt, Tone Lighting, any of these products. What we specialize is only the sensors and the wireless control and the software behind. So it's a plug and play simple. It's a plug and play principle. Client can choose what they like and this is interoperable, intercompatible. Any lighting is okay. As long as they are dimming, they are okay. All they have to do is put a, it's like uh, humans and with a glass, I mean, so you put a glass and then you see a better world. Yeah. And that's the... Yeah, I, I imagine you have a street light and you do that for every street light. You disconnect the two wires to the, to the light. In, the, in between you put your sensor uh, that is fed by electricity and uh, you now connect to the light if the sensor tells it to do and it measures at the same time. Uh, Correct. And Correct. it has a wireless connection with the next uh, uh, sensor. Yes. And, yeah. Once you install, everything, when it gets the power, everything is connected. Yeah. That's the beauty of wireless. Yeah. So okay. Brilliant. Sounds so really good. So where do you want to be in, in uh, well, say two years time? Let's not say one, but two <laughs> years time, a long time. Well, something we are proud of is that we specialize in the sensor and the wireless control. In two to five years from now, we want to be the best top three companies in the world when it comes to the sensor-based and wireless controls of outdoor lighting. Eventually, we will add different elements uh, in our portfolio, such as security, huh? and maybe traffic management, but one step at a time. Right now, we have only one focus, to be the best in the outdoor lighting controls world. Okay, okay. brilliant. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much and a lot of success. Thank yeah. you for your story. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, dank jullie allemaal uh, voor het kijken. Uh, voor wie al eerder gekeken heeft, we zijn een, een groot aantal partijen die we zeer dankbaar zijn, uh, die het mede mogelijk maakten dat we hier zijn. EMG factors waar we nu, mogen, uh, nu aanwezig mogen zijn in dit pand in uh, Groningen. Streamzilla voor uh, de stream. Zo direct gaan we verder praten over uh, Voice, ook een van de partijen die dit uh, mogelijk uh, maakt. De Social Media Club Groningen, het Mercure Hotel en dan een uh, rijtje groter. Uh, namen de Europese Unie, het Europees Fonds voor Regionale Ontwikkeling en de provincies Drenthe, Groningen en Friesland. Allemaal heel erg bedankt voor het mogelijk maken van topneems on tour in Groningen. Dankjewel. Dag. Ja.